Welcome back. Now, the basic education department faces several challenges, and some of these include safety, school infrastructure, proper water supply and sanitation facilities, as well as an integrated focus on education delivery. So joining us this morning to unpack these issues and more is a basic education minister, Angie Motseha. Minister, thanks a lot for joining us on the morning news today. No, good morning and good morning to your listeners. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the state of our education system. You know, this is a conversation that is at top of mind when it comes to South Africa. It's really the pinnacle because it determines how young people will fare as they leave school in itself. In your opinion, how is uh, the, the department doing? Basic education, I think it's a concern internationally. Even when I speak to my colleagues overseas, they just say it is because it's a very critical stage for a country's development for its children. It's still very fragile, still has lots of challenges, but I can assure you it's a system on the rise. Mm. I mean, it is a system on the rise. I mean, I'm gonna, I mean, we're going to point out the good and the bad, right? On the bad side, we saw statistics that are showing that over 5,000 teachers in the education system are actually underqualified or unqualified to teach. On the good side, you're training about 43,000 or so uh, teachers to, to get into computer skills and computer literacy so that you can stay aligned with the fourth industrial revolution. So then how do you mitigate that? Currently in the system, there are teachers that are unqualified, even admitted by SAT to itself, saying we know that the teachers are not providing the quality level of education that pupils are de uh, deserving of, but on the other side, you are training. So how are you going to marry it, especially given the fact that the, the department also wants to introduce foreign uh, nationals to come in and teach? No, we already have foreigners. We have more mm. than 40,000 foreigners in our system, uh, mainly around areas of medicine science. We have a cohort of more than 47,000 teachers. 5,000 is one too many, but 42,000 is qualified. And even these 5,000 have to qualify. It could be people with degrees who have not done a teacher's dip a, a, a diploma. So we're working with them. We give them bazaars through Funza Shaga, and we're facing them gradually. Mm. We are in a very lucky situation that lots of young people, are being, South Africans, are beginning to choose teaching as a, as a career of choice. So getting lots of energy and young people into the system, which is very encouraging. Then how do you mitigate the system where you'd find that um, teachers get employed by having kickbacks or get employed under the table? Because a lot of young people, the very same young people that you're speaking about, will turn around and say, but Minister, I'm very qualified to speak. We've had them numerous times on even our platforms. We'll say, I'm qualified to teach. I've got uh, you know, uh, the, the degree or the diploma from WITS or from whatever institution of higher learning. I'm ready. It's just that I feel like I'm not getting jobs. How do you respond to them? No, but we issue our circulars twice a year, mm. and I can assure you, I mean, we monitor employment of new graduates into the system, and uh, by the last time I had a count, we were over 90% of employment. So mm. some are not employed because they're kickbacks. They're not employed because there are no vacancies for the areas in which they've been trained. So with time, they find, uh, find jobs in the system because we have to wait for somebody to vacate the post. It's not like we're sitting with posts already there, we're able to employ. Sometimes we're not able to employ when they qualify, but with time, we're able to do so. And then how do you tackle the issue around safety? I mean, teaching right now issue. is number one, is a big issue from number one from the educator's perspective. But if you see, I'm sure you have, you've seen some of those videos on social media because children are turning more violent and unfortunately they're recording the level of violence which makes school the schooling system which is supposed to be a very safe system one of the most dangerous places to be children are being shot and killed and just horrendous things that are happening in schools how do you mitigate that oh, i'm serious no, no, I'm, but I, 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 you put it as if we're in war zones indeed we have let me say indeed we have challenges mm. and i'm glad that they come to the fore Provinces are doing all they can. I mean, no, recently, Gauteng had a, 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 a safety summit. And the level of violence, and which is important that we're raising it, and I really want the communities also to, especially parents, to pay more attention. Because it's violence that they bring with them from their homes. Mm -hmm. They bring guns from homes. They bring time, a, 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 a knives from home. They bring knives, a, a gangsterism from, from communities. Do you think parents and are not paying enough attention to, to their children and the needs of their they children? They should, because guns come from home. Yeah. Uh, knives come from home. The anger comes from home. The gangsters come from communities that are, are, are actually played in, into our schools. So it's something that ourselves as an education department, our communities, and our parents in particular, have to join hands and help our kids to really grow up as peaceful uh, adults who re really respect life and respect other people. So it's bigger than ourselves. We have a huge responsibility. Mm. We're doing all we possibly can, but it's just 
that area where we say together we can really grow this country. And then on the other side of it, I mean, besides the, the issues around safety in schools, is there are on the issue of infrastructure. You know, uh, it's, this it's is it's it's toilets. A sad one. It's a sad one. Toilets, the children going to toilets, the state, just sanitation and hygiene. And it's been an issue, I don't know, for the past 25 years. How are we going to solve it? Come on, it's 2019. And for the past 25 years, we've been on it. Yeah. I can assure you. In the past years that I've been the minister, we've been focusing on schools that we've inherited as this government, which had no sanitation. Mm. So for the past 10 years I was in, our focus on was really providing sanitation. On the flip side, we've not had enough money to do redress, which is your, 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 your pit latrines. We also had not had enough resources to do maintenance, because mm. we've been chasing the target of where there's no sanitation. But fortunately, with the president's call that we must have, with the SAFE project that he's launched, I was really humbled by how the public came forward, the private sector came forward. Just within a year, we've done almost 1,000. And those are the, 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 the toilets that we have to, to replace, not to build new toilets where there was none at, at all. But the long and short, it is a problem. Yeah. But we are getting lots of how? support. Uh, can and we I have can a, at least promise a timeline? You. At least give me something. At least say, Faith, you know what? At least we can say that within the next six months, we know that uh, we would have sorted out this issue around sanitation. I'll be lying sanitation. to the public. If I say six months, okay, I have to be give quite me a year. honest. Give me something. No, we've, we've, we've given it in public. Yeah. We said there are more than 3,900 schools without sanitation. Mm. We've already done almost 1,000. This year, we're allocating only 1,000. So you can see at the pace we're going, I can't say six months. The minimum, we can honestly tell the public, it's going to be three years. Three it years. depends on resources, it depends on a number of, of, meta, of issues. The money and the budget that uh, Treasury has voted for us, which is quite substantial, 700 million this year. Mm -hmm. 700 million can only give us 1,000 toilets because we're talking about areas where there's no water-borne system, so we have to use alternative technology, <laughs> which is extremely expensive. So we'll do 1,000 this year. We'll do another 1,000 next year. We'll finish that other in 2021. Well, let's hope so that in six three months years' is time, not you and I are going to sit down together and go, and we're literally going to no, look no, at the presentation it's, it's happening. we'll be done. No, it's happening. Well, so we have to leave our conversation there, but thanks a lot okay, for joining us. Thank you us. very much. Sis. Thank you very much. And uh, obviously, we're speaking to the Basic Education Minister, Andrew Mutsecha, just really looking at the state of our basic education and also what is being done, especially ahead of the next two years. You heard it here. Uh, what is going to be happening within the next three years to ensure that indeed school infrastructure actually is up to scratch. Now,